Hey everyone, Token Dave over here, the dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by. And welcome back to Jack Ryan January. In anticipation of the new Jack Ryan series from Amazon Prime that should be released sometime in March, I'm taking it upon myself to review all the Jack Ryan movies that have been released up until this point. And today I'm going to be talking about the fourth movie and the first reboot attempt of the series, The Sum of All Fears. So, after the Russian president dies, the United States is concerned about his successor, Narmamov, who poses as a hardline communist authoritarian. Having little insight on Narmamov, the CIA director, William Cabot, recruits Jack Ryan, a young analyst whom has thoroughly researched Narmamov to accompany him on a diplomatic mission to Russia. While in Moscow, Ryan and Cabot are permitted to inspect a nuclear weapon facility where Ryan discovers that three scientists are unaccounted for. Not believing the cover story that is given to them, Cabot and Ryan launch an investigation to find the missing scientists, unaware that there is a neo-Nazi neo fascist plot to create a nuclear war putting the United States against Russia. So, despite how clear and present danger was received very well, the next movie was supposed to be the third novel, uh, Cardinal of the Kremlin. However, Harrison Ford and the director at the time were, they weren't on same terms, they were on how to proceed with the movie, so they decided to scrap everything and reboot the franchise. And they picked the wrong story to try to reboot the franchise. Just saying this right here. Now, <clears throat> so this movie ha of the Jack Ryan movies, this movie has the reputation of being the worst one. And quite frankly, yeah, I don't think it is. I can understand why people say say it so, but here's the thing. Number one, um, <clears throat> you re they're rebooting the franchise at a point of Jack Ryan, of the character Jack Ryan's career, where he is on his own for the first time. He does not have the mentor mentee relationship that he had with Admiral Greer. So. That point does make sense, but as the novel progressed, the novel itself was very much a political, was more of a political thriller dealing with a crisis, and Jack Ryan is already seasoned. And here they're trying to make it so that Jack Ryan is fairly green, which really doesn't work. But... I will go more into detail of that in my adaptation application, you know, but just saying that, but just for the record, I'm going to state that this movie itself was really doomed to fail and fail hard. However, w however, with watching the movie, and I'm one of those people actually that originally felt that this movie was terrible, but... After watching the movie for a few years, you start to realize that the movie itself was not as bad as the init as people initially thought. In fact, to be honest, this was the movie that caused me to start reading the other Jack Ryan novels because at that time, at, th at this time, I actually only read Patriot Games and A Hunt for Red October. I did not read anything else, and also at this time, you know, Rainbow Six was fairly popular, so I wanted to see who this John Clark character was, and then I ended up getting more interested in Jack Ryan himself and the other novels that were out. So, with that said, okay, I went on too long about the novels, let's talk about the movie itself, alright? Now, one more thing about the novels that I'm going to state. Everyone gave Ben Affleck crap for portraying Jack Ryan. And that is 
unjust because the Jack Ryan in this movie is very green. He is new to the political scene. Now, while he kind of... Now, he wasn't new to the political scene in the novels and be, and he was kind of naive about how things worked in politics in Washington in the previous book, but here he is just completely new. He is a CIA analyst, you know, a low-level analyst at that. But Ben Affleck portrayed Jack Ryan the way he kind of was in the in the novels at his very young and experienced age. So I personally feel that Ben Affleck unjustly gets crap for his portrayal of Jack Ryan because this is the Jack Ryan that I actually would expect from his very early days, number one. Uh, number two, I, I really enjoyed the... Even though it's very brief, I really enjoyed the dynamic and the chemistry that Ben Affleck have with the actress who plays Catherine, Catherine Muller, who later becomes Jack Ryan's wife. I really liked their chemistry. While they didn't have as much screen time when they were together, it was their chemistry was there. And to top it off, with Ryan trying to basically keep his cover as a CIA analyst, you know... <laughs> the hiccups that they had with trying to get dates where Ryan was abruptly called was pretty cool. And speaking about pretty cool and the disruption of the dates, you know, Morgan Freeman as William Cabot was really good. I did enjoy the mentor-mentee relationship that they had. Was it as good as the mentor-mentee relationship with James Earl Jones and Alec Baldwin or James Earl Jones as Harrison Ford? Frankly, no. But it still was enjoyable. And I actually did like the more laid-back comedic spin that Morgan Freeman had. Because what people don't realize is that Calvin, unlike Admiral Greer, was not a military person. All right? The plot of the movie um, is kind of, it's kind of jumbled. But it is easy to follow. It's actually much easier to follow in the movie compared to the novel, right? Where the movie, it's basically, you know, a miscommunication, you know, between Russia and the United States. And to be honest, this communication made a lot of sense because basically, you know, Narmamov acts in a certain way and the United States see the way he acts. And one of the things that I actually really did like about this is because... In the other Jack Ryan adaptations, you know, Jack Ryan is seen as basically infallible and flawless and doesn't make mistakes. And in the novel, he doesn't make as many grave mistakes, but in the sum of all fears, he does and everything with trying to maintain, like, basically, you know, with trying to be as accurate as possible, but... Here, he is accurate as possible, but it is very hard to convince other people because A, he is young and inexperienced, and B, you know, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it is a duck, and people can't see beyond the actual facade, but Ryan's able to do so, and Ben Affleck does an excellent job of portraying that. The uh, big event happens in the movie that also happens in the novel that is actually like, you know, really mind blowing. And when when it does happen, the movie itself does take a more a more action oriented turn, you know? And here's the thing. Unlike I have to say this, unlike the other movies, this movie actually moves faster and it is easier to follow along. And I really feel that the direction of this movie, despite being a terrible adaptation, well, a bad adaptation, you know, what they tried to do to adapt it to the mainstream audience, they did a good job. But the problem was, like, some things are a little jarring and a little far-fetched. I mean, more far-fetched than, like, you know, the previous movies. And to be honest, like, you know, while I really enjoyed Ben Affleck and Morgan Freeman... Everyone else in this movie was kind of... Uh, so, you really weren't that interested. Oh, one exception. 
Levi Schreiber as John Clark. This is the young John Clark that I would have loved to seen from Without Remorse if they ever did a Without Remorse movie because this John Clark was awesome. So I have to give Levi Schreiber that. But, you know, the other character, side characters, they were just there, you know, you you really weren't gra you know, the average person wouldn't be grasped, but as quickly as for some reason, even though it's moved faster, you know, it it doesn't connect as quickly with the average audience as it should have, which is quite a surprise. And I just gotta say, no, you know what? I'll save that for the adaptation application. But what what I personally feel, personally, this movie moves faster. We have decent performances from the leads. You know, we have some unexpected things that occur in this movie that basically are eye opening. The action sequences are are actually decent. The political tension and suspense does lack that I must say and the musical score is not as impactful so I really feel that this movie actually gets a really bad rap I enjoyed this one actually more than Patriot Games so you know this is probably going to be a controversial uh, verdict but I'm going to say that some of our fears is actually cool you know uh, but I'm giving it a high cool, not a mild cool that I actually gave Patriot Games. Agree? Disagree? Drop me a comment below. Give me a like. Follow me on Facebook at Token Dave or on Twitter at Token Dave 80. Subscribe and ring that bell so you know when new video loads and spread this video out. But until then, this has been Token Dave, Dorky Token Black Guy who's just trying to get by. I'll catch all of you later.